VMTs, the VMNTs, uh, not this exact one because uh, I have different colored ones. The different colored ones, because of how old they are, they have different degrees of um, seasoning with the pickups. The water, the moisture, the sweat from me going inside the pickup rings has changed the way that the pickup sounds. So they get broken in over time. And I uh, used the, the signature cabinets I have that Marshall made for me. They're, um, they're classic square Marshall cabinets, but they're, it's a new model. It's, it's uh, something we designed together. Uh, yeah, speaker cabinets called the 1960 DM. It's my model. We, we have completely redesigned the whole thing and, and are using signature Celestian speakers that I designed too. So, I mean, frankly, take my name off it if you don't like it. Just listen to it because it's one of the best cabinets I made. People that have worked there almost 30 years said it's the best thing that they make. Well, those are, those are a little bit less wattage, so um, they don't really, you can't really fire them up that much without them wearing down over time. It, it's, it's definitely got the characteristics of greenbacks, but um, it's uh, a little bit more consistent than that. You just have to listen to the record. It's on the record. Uh, it was a JVM Marshall 410, and uh, like I said, the 1960 DM cabinets. I don't practice. I you what because mm -mm, I get bored doing it. Usually, what happens is I'll write something when I start playing, and I'm never ready to record. So uh, my brain tells me, "Don't pick up the guitar." Okay. Because if you're going to write something and you're not going to record it, you're going to get pissed off. Okay. And I've done that so many times. I'll start playing something and I'll look around and I'll look for my cell phone so I can call my voicemail and then listen to what I'm doing over the voicemail. And my phone's always away someplace. I have to walk a couple steps, and by the time I come back to the guitar, I have to pick it back up and sit down. I've forgotten what I've done. And, you know, the difference between one note means all the difference in the world, you know? Well, the, the technique is really, um, it's based on, on a lot of things. It's not just the right hand, it's, it's what you're doing. And, you know, I pedal on all different kinds of strings. You're talking back and forth like this. That's uh, either called pedaling or butterfly picking. And I do a lot of down picking, which is the same exact motion as butterfly picking, except you're not picking it on the way back up. Mm -hmm. So one is down picking like this, and the other is... Well, I can't really show them. If I, you want me to keep playing it, you know, I mean, this is how I play. But the, the part about the pick, too, when the pick is going perpendicular to the string like this, it makes more noise because when it hits the string before it releases, it's got more time before it plucks it. If it's flat with it and it's parallel to the string, it's, there's no, there's no, there's, you, hear, you can hear it. There's a noise there, like, you can almost hear it right before the note. This way, it's just a note. So I try and pick as much as I can, pedaling over the string with the pick parallel to the string like that. And if I mute the string with a little bit of the meat on the outside of my palm here, it makes the string sound better, so it's percussive. If I open it up, that's the same thing. It's the same thing pedaling. You just slide in your hand up. You can completely deaden it, so it's just percussive, or roll it back a little bit more, it becomes more melodic. Okay, that is... So that part... That's the beginning part. It has a couple different variations of that, and then the first part is... These are all weird chords. People wouldn't even notice that. The Those are all really evil sounding chords. And I didn't do it to try and be like, oh, I'm so evil, you know, because that's stupid. But um, it was just something that worked. <laughs> I go from those weird chords to a power chord because it just has finality to it. So and what I'm going uh, in, in this kind of shape, which is basically the same shape as a normal G chord, that's a G. So when I do this, it's kind of like just moving the G. And the 
the power chords, and that ends it. And then it's the same thing again. So that's that part. There's other riffs to that song, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, that's that's all there really is to Holy Wars, except for. That's the progression on that too. So um, the second part of that song, the punishment do is, is different. It's and the way I grab all those chords, it makes all those different sounds. I'm hammering on that and then rolling off. It's really weird. And it gives it way much more sound than going. That's boring, you know, so I go. And I do that over and over again. And they do something that reminds me kind of like of the Beatles. Let me do this right. It's been a while since I played this. doing a C chord there. What would that be up here? That's what the chord would look like if you did it this oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so that's the other part, and then the very end of it, it, um, it, it when it goes... <laughs> And then it changes back to the funky chord again. And then I do my solo, which I can't show you. <laughs>